Hi everybody, this is Mr. RB. I'm going to show you how to turn the letter O into a bubble O and turn the bubble O into what seems like a three-dimensional O using one-point perspective. Here's what we need to do. I'm going to begin by making a horizon line and I'm placing mine high up on my paper today. My horizon line will be a horizontal line going side to side. Notice horizon, horizontal, because they come from the same thing. And I need a vanishing point, and I'm going to put that way over on the left. It must be, the vanishing point must be on the horizon line. It could be anywhere on the line. It could even be off the page. But I want mine way over on the left today. The horizon line has now separated the sky, everything above it, from the ground, everything below it. When I see something that's above the horizon line, that means I'm looking up at it. I might see the bottom of it, say an airplane flying overhead. When I'm looking at something below the horizon line, say a can of soup sitting on the table, I'll see the top of the can of the soup, but I won't see the bottom anymore because I'm looking down on it. We're going to use that to help make our O look more three-dimensional. And here's how. First, I'm just going to draw a nice circle. And what I'm going to do to draw a circle, I hold my pencil with the tip just off the page, and I go round and round and round and round. And when I feel like I'm getting a nice round shape, not my best, but it'll work. And now I need a smaller one in the middle. Ooh, it could be directly in the middle or a little off to the side. There's a lot of ways to draw the letter O. And yes, I've even seen some that were very blocky and angular. Hey, that's pretty round there. All right, now I'm ready to use my one-point perspective to create the illusion that this is a three-dimensional form. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my pencil on my vanishing point, my ruler on the pencil, and then I'm going to um, pivot my ruler, like I might pivot my leg or my foot in um, basketball, until it touches the O. Oh, touch the outside of the O, and then I'm going to connect to that spot. I'm going to do this on the other side. I'm going to pencil on the vanishing point ruler on the pencil, and I'm pivoting my pencil till I touch the O. Not too bad. Now, I want to get a nice, smooth curve when I put in the back line, and I want it to match this. I also notice that I have this slight blip in here, and maybe I want to keep that, and I want to have that show up in the back wall as well. This is, how I'm gonna, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my pencil on the vanishing point, ruler on the pencil, and then I'm going to add like about a, say, a half inch line. And I'm going to move up a little bit and add another like half inch line. And then I'm going to put my pencil back on the vanishing point, move my ruler again, and add another, oh, I don't know, half inch line. And then I'm going to add, put my pencil on the vanishing point, move my pencil again, and add yeah, that's right. No, I know. A half inch line. I'm going to keep doing this until I make my way all the way over to that line I originally drew there. I think I could fit one more in with no problem. I'm going to use these little lines as guides. And I can make as many as I need to. Oh, like over here, I think I want to add another one right here. There we go. I now can go make a curved line that goes along the tips of all of those lines. Um, by the way, I'm making a three-dimensional O that seems like a disc as opposed to a ball shape. 
uh, and there's a whole nother approach that would let me use modeling, light and tone, light and dark tones, to create a um, illusion that this is a round sphere-like shape, sort of like a basketball. But here I'm going for more like a disc. Now I did the outside over here, and I'm going to say that the sun is over here. Whoop, there's the sun. So I'm going to say if the sun's coming here, this part will be pretty bright. This part will be much darker. A little less dark. A little less dark. And probably not too dark. I'm going to smear that in a bit. I'm just adding layers of tone and making this really dark down here. The darkness here will make the bright whites seem even brighter. And I can smear those together to make them softer so you notice the shading but you don't notice the mark making. And that will also help create the illusion of three dimensions. Now I did the outside wall, I need to do the inside wall. I'm going to do the same thing along here that I did up in here. Watch and see. I put my, vanishing, my pencil on the vanishing point, my ruler on the pencil, and I'm going to make about a half inch long line. And then another half inch long line. And then another half inch long line. And we'll see if we can fit another. Not so much, and that's okay. I'm going to go back the other way because I didn't do this side. All right, let's try that. I'm going to make about a half inch long line and another one. By the way, the amount, like the fact that it's half an inch, that's totally arbitrary. I just picked an amount. And if you were not using, let's say you were using a piece of cardboard, you could just mark out a little piece and figure out how it should be. So now I have all these tips, by the way. But you, could, you don't have to use a ruler. I, I like the convenience, but you don't have to. I'm just going to connect these with a nice curve. Oops. That echoes the curve of this over here, the front that I originally drew. And once again, um, the light is coming from here. This is inside the roof. Roof might put this in shadow, but um, if any light gets there, it'll tend to fall here more than up here. So that's definitely the opposite. I'm going to just get some nice dark tone in there. I'm trying to use curving marks because curving marks describe curving surfaces. And of course the O does have curved surfaces. Now, if I was drawing from observation and looking at an object shaped like this, I could look and see what was going on with the light, but we're just creating ideal shapes and what we think ideally would happen. We have to sort of figure out what we think should happen. I have to say, knowing those things comes in real handy when I am working from observation. A lot of times it helps me see what's really going on and not just what I expect. All right, so I got some tone, I got my O. Um, we aren't really talking in this series about how to use perspective to create shadows. And there are ways to use it to figure out how, what the direction is and how long the shadow will be. We're just gonna um, add a little bit of tone all around here.
and I use the side of my pencil because it um, goes faster, it's easier to smear, and it's easier to erase. When I draw with the tip, it tends to dig into the paper and it makes it harder to smear it or remove it. Notice I'm making what looks almost like, it would be almost be like an oval shape, which is the flattened out version of a circle. And what do you know, my O is a circle. I'm going to get a little tone going around the front face of my O. I'm going to figure that if the sun's back here, this would not be in bright light. But I do want to clean up the white in the middle because that should be nice and bright. Add a little extra dark down here. And I think we're just about done with the O. Well, O's are so useful. Those vowels. Put those with a couple other letters, and you're not just doing letters, you're now doing words. Mmm, there's a fun idea. Well, I hope you have fun with the O and any of the other letters you're trying out, and I'll be talking to you real soon. Thank you very much. Bye, everybody.